Alright, now that we have a, uh, a working computer, um, we're going to have to have, make it do some fancier things, but I thought we would uh, go over the, uh, the block diagram again to give you an update of uh, everything that we've done. Uh, I thought it would be a good time for that. So I'm going to walk through the, um, the diagram here and the uh, flowchart, and uh, I'll point to different sections on the um, on the computer tell you what's going on so um, we can start let's say with the clock uh, so the clock is a two-phase clock so there's two lines going to a, a, a counter that counts uh, four bits uh, 16 steps so this is the clock module down here uh, it's a 555 and the uh, 22v10 that uh, supplies the two-phase clock and some other uh, timing um, it then talks to the next board here, which is the microcode machine. So this next board is basically uh, all of the rest of this down here. Okay. So this block, maybe I should put some dotted lines on these to tell you what the boards are. The clock is this down here. Uh, these four blocks here are the uh, microcode, uh, microcode machine down here. So like I said, it has a 4-bit counter, so there's... Um, up to 16 steps per instruction. There is an instruction register that you can write to, and that's down here. Um, and there's some LEDs located uh, on these eight lines, so you can uh, look to see what the uh, what the instruction is. Uh, the instruction then goes to a microcode uh, decoding. Uh, the microcode uh, machine is just a ROM, so uh, 12 bits in, 8 bits out. And uh, that then goes to a couple um, uh, LS154 chips that do an 8 to 32 line decode. Uh, for every instruction, it selects a from device and a to device. We've gone through that. One thing that you're probably not familiar with because we haven't really talked about it much is there is four bits from the instructions. So four of these bits here uh, are sent to the ALU. And they are S0, S1, S2, which tells the ALU which one of eight different operations to do, and then carry in. Um, those are tied to different bits um, in the instructions, such as like the uh, carry in is the lowest bit, uh, bit zero, and uh, S0, uh, zero, one, two, uh, zero, 1, and 2 are the upper three bits. And let's see, so that's it over there. Uh, we can talk about maybe this section here. Um, this is an I.O. Uh, input device. Uh, read switches. Uh, that is this here. Connects to the data bus. The data bus is these two long circuit boards. There's just eight, uh, 10 wires, 8 data lines, and power and ground. So that's our data bus under there. Um, this is our input device, switches. And then there's an output device, which is a latch and some uh, LEDs uh, here. Right. Uh, we can go up uh, this way uh, to the program counter, which is which is down here. Uh, the program counter is shown here. It's a bidirectional. You can write to it or read from it. Um, read from it. Usually you read it, and it goes into the RAM address. Um, if you want to write to it to do a jump instruction, that usually comes from ROM or RAM and gets loaded in this direction. Uh, so that's the program counter. Um, and then, uh, let's see, uh, since we're here, let's do this block here. This is the ROM RAM. Uh, and there's 128 uh, bytes of ROM, 128 bytes of ROM, uh, RAM. Uh, the lower, it, it's mapped such that the uh, lower 128 is ROM and the upper 128 is RAM. Uh, the address for that comes from a RAM address latch, uh, which is on this board. And uh, I'll, these eight lines are shown on LEDs, so you can see which uh, uh, address that you uh, are at. Um, again, RAM and ROM, uh, at least RAM is bidirectional. You can write to RAM, you can read um, from RAM. ROM is unidirectional, you can only read from it. And then we have the board in the back here. Uh, this multi-stack board, which is our ALU. Uh, there are two registers. Um, 
that are read-write registers, uh, the A register and the B register. Um, those go into an ALU unit uh, that allows you to do um, arithmetic or logic operations on them and then send them out to the bus. So this is a read-only. In addition to that, our ALU has a board on top that does some uh, uh, analysis that shows you whether uh, the two registers are equal. A is greater than B, B is less than A, B, A is less than B, or B is equal to zero. So those lines come out. Uh, cur currently, those are not used for anything. So if we want to get to a point where we, we can do a simple jump instruction that's just to a fixed location, if we want to do a conditional jump, say jump of equal, jump of greater than, jump of zero, things like that, we will need to take these four lines and send them into the microcode machine and have the microcode machine do something different depending on those bits. Um, we could take these four bits and use them on some instruction lines. Um, I think what I want to do is I want to put a, um, a multiplexer here. Uh, so I will have a, uh, a, a 4 to 1 multiplexer. So I can choose which one of these uh, four lines to send out to a single line and send that up to one of the instruction lines. Um, so um, that will change uh, the instruction value depending on um, which bits uh, are set or not. So again, choose one of these. Um, I think that will work well. We can probably also add maybe carry out. So carry out maybe can be a, a 5 to 1 multiplexer. Send that out as well so we can do that. Uh, so we can do jump on carry. Uh, things like that. That's how that's how that would be executed. Um, yeah, uh, the um, the board seems to be a little more stable when I have the uh, uh, ALU hooked to there. So I'm thinking that maybe the uh, maybe the bus uh, should be terminated. Uh, cur currently, the bus is floating. The bus maybe should have some termination resistors on them. The only thing they really have in there right now is this monitor with these LEDs, but I don't think they're really doing much. I think maybe having some some pull down or pull up resistors um, on these lines, probably pull down resistors on these lines, may quiet the bus down, may allow it to operate better. Uh, we'll have to see about that. Just just a theory right now. Um, but anyway, I hope that ho that helps. I know it helped me. Uh, I re redrew a bit of this and started thinking about it. So. Um, but that's what we've that's what we've built. It is a, a true eight bit uh, design. Um, it could be extended in the future if somebody wanted to do that by um, putting in uh, two uh, RAM uh, address latches. So you would load ho high and low separately, and then you could address uh, sixteen uh, sixteen uh, lines of uh, of ROM and RAM. Um, what else could be done? Uh, eventually, we will change uh, uh, input and output. Maybe add a uh, an actual LCD uh, display on the output. Maybe a a one line or four line display. Um, the input could be a keyboard. Um, but uh, things to add in in the future. Um, but it's basically exactly what I've wanted to uh, to do um, as a learning experience for me. I've always wanted to build a a, a TTL level CPU and I think I've accomplished that now. I'm pretty happy with this. It's it's not perfect yet um, but it, uh, it it does do something and it, it has all the components that's necessary and uh, I feel like I've learned a lot uh, a lot doing it so um, yeah looks good.